Hello third graders, I'm here with the one and only Ivan. Um, since we're getting kind of close to the end, I sent you a Google form to fill out to vote for the next read aloud book. So if you haven't done that already, go ahead and do that today. Um, I'm gonna be reading pages 228 to 237. All right, the ape artist. I have new names, people call me the ape artist, the primate Picasso. I have visitors from morning till night and so does Ruby. But nothing's changed for her. Every day at two, four, and seven, Ruby plods through the sawdust with stickers on her back. Every night she has bad dreams. Bob, I say after I have soothed Ruby to sleep with a story, my idea isn't working. Bob opens one eye. Be patient. I'm tired of being patient, I say. Interview. This evening, a man and woman come to interview Mac and also George and Julia. The man has a large and heavy camera perched on his shoulder. He films me as I make my pictures. He films Ruby in her cage with her foot roped to the bolt in the floor. Mind if I take a look around, he asks. Mac waves a hand. Be my guest. While Mac and the woman talk, the cameraman walks through the mall. He pans his camera right and left, up and down. When his eyes fall on the claw stick, he stops. He trains his camera on the gleaming blade. Then he moves on. <clears throat> the early news. Mac turns on the TV. We are on the early news at 5 o'clock. Bob says, don't let it get to my head. There we all are, Ruby, Mac, me, George, and Julia, the billboard, the mall, the ring, and the claw stick. Signs on sticks. In the morning, several people gather in the parking lot. They're carrying signs on sticks. The signs have words and pictures on them. One has a drawing of a gorilla cradling a baby elephant. I wish I could read. Protesters. More people with signs come today. They want Ruby to be free. Some of them even want Mac to shut down the mall. In the evening, George and Mac talk about them. Mac says they're protesting the wrong guy. He says they're going to ruin everything. He says, thanks for nothing, George. Mac stomps off. George, holding his mop, watches him leave. He rubs his eyes. He looks worried. Dad, Julia says, looking up from her homework, you know what my favorite sign was? Hmm, George asks, which one? The one that said elephants are people too. George gives her a tired smile. He goes back to work. His mop moves across the empty food court like a giant brush, painting a picture no one will ever see. Check marks. A tall man with a clipboard and pencil comes to visit. He says he is here to inspect the property. He doesn't say much more, but he makes many check marks on his paper. He looks at my floor. Check. He examined Ruby's hay. Check. His eyes are water. He eyes are water bowls. Check. Mac watches him, scowling. Bob is outside, hiding near the dumpster. He does not want to be a check mark. Free Ruby. Every day there are, are more protesters and cameras with bright lights. Sometimes the people carrying the signs shout, Free Ruby! Free Ruby! Ivan, Ruby asks, Why are those people yelling my name? Are they mad at me? They're mad, I say, but not at you. A week later, the inspecting man comes back with a friend, a woman with smart, dark eyes like my mother's. She has a white coat on, and she smells like lobelia blossoms. Her hair is thick and brown, the color of a rotten branch teeming with luscious ants. She watches me for a long time, then she watches Ruby. She talks to the man, they both talk to Mac. The man gives Mac a sheet of paper. Mac covers his face, he goes to his office and slams the door. New box. Something strange is happening. The white-coated woman is back with other humans. They place a large box in the center of the ring. It's ruby-sized. And then suddenly I know why the woman is here. She's here to take Ruby away. All right.
right, so in the journal section, I would like for you to answer this question. Um, how do you think Ivan feels about the box taking Ruby away? All right, so jot down your ideas. I would love to know what you think. And I'll be back tomorrow with more of One and Only Ivan. Bye, guys.